it is uh, Tuesday. It has been a very, very long day, so I'm not sure how much more energy I've got or how much more of a voice I have, although it's been an awesome day. I've been um, drumming and singing with kids today, and I'm like, I miss that so much. It's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, and so it's it's been good. Uh, I got home, and my drum rounds arrived, so I'm excited to make drums with some kids uh, in a few weeks, so I'm super stoked about that. And my, my house smells like really beautiful wet cedar, and I love that smell. It's so good. Um, but I just wanted, of course, to start today by welcoming everybody into the circle um, by sharing the cute welcome song and just by acknowledging the land upon which we stand because it's important. It's important to um, acknowledge the land that you stand upon. And I am so thankful and humbled to be where I am. Um, I'm thankful that I'm here in Mokinstis. Uh, this has been my home for, well, off and on about 20 years. And um, it just, I moved away and I've always come back. because There's something really special about this place. And so I, even though my family is from Treaty 6 territory, we're from Muscat Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. So I'm Anishinaabe and Cree and Métis. Um, I still have this special kinship here. I feel like this is where I have met so many friends that have just turned into family members. Um, this is where, you know, my passions have just been able to code and I've been able to share and create. And so I'm so, so thankful to be where I am. Uh, and so I honor the, the land, I honor McKinstis, I honor the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai and Bagani. I honor the Cersei Dene from Tsutsuna, also known as the Beaver People. And uh, the Stony Nakota from Wally, which includes Chiniki, Bearspa, and West Baker's Nations. Uh, also, I remember the fact that we're walking in the footsteps of uh, the Metis of Region 3, which is why I proudly wear my Metis sash. Um, and <laughs> actually, there was somebody last week who asked me if I only wear it on one side, and I do. I only wear it on the left hand side, um, usually. Oh. I think I'm on the right hand side today. That's really weird. Normally, I always have mine on the left hand side. Um, but it's because um, on the left, I've been taught my teachings are if it's on the left, they're looking for love. If it's on the right, you found the right person. And so, um, but mine is backwards today. <laughs> I don't know why. I was like in a rush, just like throwing things on. And normally it would be on the other side. Um, but I think maybe I should just start wearing it on this side for a little while to even out my tan because I'm like really dark on one side and not on the, on the other which is hilarious um but i mean it's good that you know we're getting out in the sunshine um and so i just really honor all of the people of this area and all of the teachers that i've had and the elders that have guided me and and it's just so humbled every time i'm able to share in a good way and so I wanted to welcome everyone into the circle with the Cree Welcome Song. Uh, this song is from the Nathahau family um, of Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation, which is on the border of Saskatchewan and Alberta. And when I sing this song, it's really about honoring and recognizing um, you know, all of the struggles that we've gone through to keep these songs and these stories alive. And so I thank the family for being able to be strong enough to keep this song because it's so special. There's something really um, incredible about it. When I sing it, I feel like I'm moving everybody and I feel like sisters are around me. Um, I feel like I'm calling in all the four directions with this song, even though we only sing it in rounds of three to keep the circle open. It is like keeping it open for the ancestors to join us. Um, and so uh, it teaches us about honoring each other and not judging people and not comparing ourselves to others because we don't know the track they're on, um, which sometimes in our in our communities can be really tough because there's a lot of lateral violence and we have to recognize that that's not actually coming from us that is you know coming from years and years of colonization and it's worked <laughs> so <laughs> we need to just backtrack and be able to change those ways of thinking to be able to unify um, our communities um, now more than ever I mean we're seeing around the world all of our communities need to work together to raise each other's voices. Um, and so really when I sing this song, that's, that's truly that power that's there, that power of unity, that power of bringing everybody to get together. And so me as sin, uh, it just just me welcome. It also means beautiful. Me as me as Ah, Semina, 
Hi, hi, and welcome to the circle today. So, um, since I've been working with kids all day, I've got a lot of my kids' songs in my head. So, I wanted to start with um, the bear song and just acknowledging the stories and the teaching of the bear. And there's a lot of different stories. One of the stories of the bear that I actually haven't shared a really long time, I think I've only shared it a few times actually, is um, the story of, of the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper um, and Orion's Belt. And so it's a star story. And um, part of it is uh, about why uh, you know the stars come up, specifically the Bear um, and the Big Dipper goes up into the sky in the fall. And so, and why our bears will hibernate in the fall. So there's that connection there. Um, but it was said that there was a giant bear and he was just causing destruction. Like everywhere he would go and all of the other bears were trying to, you know, warn the humans, warn the other people. But this bear just didn't have the teachings that every other bear had, which was, you know, to only take what you need and to really honor the earth that you stood upon. But this bear was just um, embodying all of that negativity, all of that ego, all of that uh, greed, all of the things that go against our teachings. And this bear was just causing havoc everywhere he would go. And bears before had been told, like, don't kill the two-leggeds. You know, we're friends, we're family. And this bear went ahead and he killed an entire village of two-leggeds. So it was just, it was a bad time. And um, then there was a bunch of hunters from all of the tribes that came together and said, okay, well, our best hunters have to go and try and kill this bear. They have to go and try and hunt this bear. When the bear heard that this was going to happen, you know, he started to prepare and he started to, you know, run away from these hunters. And this chase went on and on on and on for days and nights and it seems like the nights were getting shorter and shorter because this chase was going on for so long and the hunters were getting so exhausted and there were two beautiful birds and they said that they would help with the hunt one was a completely beautiful black bird and the other was this beautiful brown bird a larger larger than a sparrow and together they came up with a plan to distract the bear and because of course the bear was well he had a lot of ego issues and so they were teasing him saying that he wasn't the biggest bear, that he wasn't the best bear. And he was trying to claw at them. And while they were distracting him, the hunters came and they shot their arrows at him and threw their spears at him. And one of them was able to hit him back, but that just made him rear up. And the birds knew that the bear was going to go in just one false swoop, he would have probably killed all of the hunters. And so they decided to work together and they dove into the bear's chest, one of them right under his rib cage, piercing his heart. And as she flew back out, her whole chest was covered in red. And this is how we have the robin's red breast. And then the other one dove 
into its back and started pecking at every aspect of it. So much blood was all over the place that it just soaked the entire body of this beautiful black bird, creating the cardinal that we have today. And so these birds were able to scare that bear enough and weaken him enough that the hunters were able to chase him. And um, well, depending on which story you hear, <laughs> Nana Bajou, uh, or uh, Wasaka Jack, depending on if it's a Cree story or an Anishinaabe story, um, told the hunters to chase them in the sky and created a path so that they were able to chase the bear into the sky. And as the bear rose higher and higher and higher in the sky, he shook his coat. And as he did, all of his blood spurted all over the trees below and all of the leaves began to change color. They began to change red and orange and brown and yellow. And this is how we now have the fall. And as he rose up into the sky, the hunters were still chasing him. Um, and so the bear is that giant, giant big dipper, but their little lasso behind him, little dipper. And so he knows if he gets out of line, they will ensnare him again. And so to this day, as we look up in the sky, we see the, um, I believe it's Cassiopeia, but those stars are always following that bear, making sure and always facing him, making sure no matter where he goes, he will always be trapped up in the heavens of the stars. But now to this day, every time the bears remember this huge battle, it makes them want to hibernate because <laughs> they want to get away from that because they don't want to have the same fate as the bears. So this is why they are always sleeping through the winter because that bear decided he wouldn't sleep through the winter and that's when he caused the most havoc. And so the bears, out of respect for the hunters and the two legged, sleep through the winter. Um, and this is also why all of our leaves change color. And the first sign of spring is the robin. Because as she comes forward with her red breast, she reminds all of the bears to stay in check, stay humble, and do not get greedy. And so. I probably butchered that a little bit, but it's a beautiful story. Um, and so I'm going to share the bear song uh, after a little bit about the teachings behind the bear. So the bear is amazing. We continue to watch the bear to know what to eat and when to eat it. Um, if there's something going on, like out west, um, the bears are actually chewing and clawing and ripping pods of pine beetles off the trees. They're telling us like these beetles are an issue, like get rid of them. They will always be almost like the canary in the coal mine, but the bear in the forest or the bear in the field uh, warning us if something is going on. Um, out, I believe it was in Williams Lake a few years ago, the bear stopped eating the fish. And when the First Nations people saw this, they were like, whoa, bears aren't eating the fish? Don't touch the fish. Uh, so they didn't eat the fish. Uh, but it's a tourist town. People like to fish. And people had a pretty miserable summer. They had really bad stomach aches and cramps and uh, they were on the toilet a lot. Uh, and when scientists came to figure out what was going on, they tested the water first, of course, but nothing was wrong with the water. But then they, when they tested the fish, they found the microorganism that was making everybody sick. So the bear knew it. They didn't touch the fish. The First Nations people who watched the bear knew it. They didn't touch the fish. But nobody else listened. They had a pretty miserable vacation. Um, also, when uh, we look at the bear, it teaches us about timing, which probably ties in to that story of the great bear um, going into the sky and then the fall and how it hibernates, but it teaches us how to get ready for winter. And so if the bear is really, really fat, we know it's going to be a really cold, a really long winter. And so oftentimes we would travel down south with our families. And, um, so we would be warmer. <laughs> or if it wasn't going to be that bad, we would stick around uh, if it, the bear wasn't too, too fat. And so we would know how it was going to be. It warns us. It gives us a heads up. It knows um, if something's not supposed to be there, it handles it. Uh, and it teaches us that in our own lives, we have to face our problems head on. Because the bear knows it, it has to step in and it has to do its part. So we need to remember the teachings of that bear. Uh, and so, yeah, this is the Anishinaabe bear song. It's so fun. Kids love this song. That's why it's totally been in my head all day today. <laughs> Oh, 
also been in my head. Uh, I shared an article on my Facebook about how um, when birds are communicating, uh, sometimes their brains just shut down so that they can actually like absorb the information that's coming at them from the other birds, um, which is the teaching surrounds chickadee, which is why we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen to us as much as we speak. Um, but it's amazing how they will teach us how to do that, how we need to just stop and listen and be present because we expect the same from other people. <laughs> um, but also, Like one of my streams is having connection issues, issues with my internet. So why uh, so I'm kind of like um, I've been hearing them a lot. And actually, 